Well, hey there, I'm Jay. Welcome to my apartment and my new booth. Look at that, it's a Studio Bricks 1 VO edition. And what I wanted to do for you today was talk through my decision-making process as to why I thought this was a worthwhile investment for me, my business, my situation, as well as some of the features that I was curious about with Studio Bricks in particular that uh, I couldn't find concrete information on when I was making my purchase. Um, so hopefully that's helpful for you. Before we dive into all that though, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, I'm offering those on my website. Some of you have asked about this here on this channel. So if that interests you, check those out. Uh, and if the time that you'd like isn't available, just shoot me an email and we'll figure something out. Uh, because of my working schedule as a voiceover artist and all the jobs that I have to balance, my time's somewhat limited, so I have to kind of work around that. Um, so shoot me an email, we'll figure something out. With that said, let's talk about this thing. So here we are in the booth, and the first thing that we'll talk about is the soundproofing. How good actually is it? Well, to demonstrate, as we've been talking just now, I've had my phone just outside blasting some royalty-free tunes, courtesy of Epidemic Sound, not sponsored by Love'em. Uh, and so let's see how good it is. Now I'll open the door. So, it's pretty darn respectable. Uh, as an anecdotal follow-up to that, the day that we had this constructed and delivered, um, my friend who was helping me put it together and my wife were just outside having a conversation and I had to record a gig in the afternoon. They were able to continue their conversation at conversational level and I was completely uninterrupted. I could hear just like the faintest hint of in terms of what they were saying, but it didn't make it into my recording at all and it was totally clean. Uh, I will say on that note, in terms of the uh, uh, lower frequencies will still make it through, not perfectly, but they will. For example, if an airplane flies by and my windows open outside, it gets picked up because it's just a low frequency that's going to pass right through most any booth that you can possibly find out there. Uh, so while the soundproofing is really good, it is not soundproof. Um, but in terms of quality of life and peace of mind, whenever I would have live sessions here in my apartment, uh, because I A, live in Brooklyn, I live in a multifamily building, 15 floors, 10 apartments per floor, there's a lot of people. So if somebody shuts a door or dog barks, baby cries, they're doing maintenance in the building, I can't control that and I could never guarantee to my clients during live recording sessions whether or not we might get interrupted, which isn't a huge issue for them, but uh, for me, it caused me a fair amount of stress, and having this is really, really a great peace of mind in that regard. Additionally, if I'm doing long-form stuff like audiobooks, uh, and my wife wants to live her life, I've mentioned it before here on the channel, and I, I just don't want to have to monitor my recordings all the time, so I'm just able to do my thing and not have to worry about listening for a little bump or knock here and there. Hey, quality of life, definite plus for the soundproofing. The next thing that I was super duper curious about was the ventilation. I was really, really concerned that it would be comfortable in a studio bricks, and I couldn't find any practical uh, sort of firsthand reviews in that regard. So let me tell you. Um, now, for context, my old booth, it was sheetrock, insulation, some mass-loaded vinyl, another bit of uh, acoustic treatment, and a passive intake and outtake. My apartment rests at about 74, 75 degrees Fahrenheit on a good day. It's part of New York City. We just can't control that very much. Uh, so my old booth, with all of that, the passive intake, outtake, would hover around 85 degrees Fahrenheit on a good day and up to about 95 degrees during the summer and uh, if I had a long session, an audiobook, for example. So I am used to sweating it out and breathing heavily because I'm just being stifled. Uh, this booth is much, much more comfortable. Is it still warm? 
Yes. The ventilation does work, but it uh, does get progressively toastier and toastier. I would say that this hovers at about 79 degrees at its max, and then it's just resting at about, uh, well, I should say it goes a little bit above 79, but whenever I check the temp, it's around there. And the otherwise, it just rests at the ambient temperature of my apartment. So it, it does get warmer after a time. Is it uncomfortable for me? No, but uh, depending on where you live, what you're used to, uh, it's just part of the gig. As far as the ventilation system that's provided with it, this box that looks like this, as well as the passive exhaust, the uh, intake system is dead silent. I just always keep it on full blast because I just want air moving through here. Um, and it's so quiet that I'm not even sure that I've installed it correctly. <laughs> That's how quiet it is. The passive exhaust, it does its job. Um, but as I noted, it does build in heat. What I did do was from my old booth, I took the exhaust system, which uh, looked a bit like this. It, uh, I stuck a four inch ducting into the exhaust port at the top of here. Uh, top of the booth, strung that to my um, ventilation system, and just pulled it out. So do you feel like you're in an air-conditioned environment? No, uh, but it's comfortable, at least for me. Next up, the acoustic treatment. How does it actually sound in here? Well, you're listening to it now, and it sounds pretty good, pretty darn good. This stuff here is really, really nice. It's made out of plastic bottles, if you can believe it. Uh, I will note that if you're considering trying to go budget and not get the VO edition, uh, which is totally reasonable, uh, I would highly recommend looking into the bass traps that Studio Bricks provides or investing in your own. That is absolutely 100% necessary for the sound of this space. We did sort of an A-B test before I installed them, and it was remarkably noticeable how boxy this place got without a bass trap. Uh, so you will need that to note. As far as the reflections, it's not as dead in terms of the reflections in this booth as it was compared to my old booth. And the reason being is this lovely glass door to my left. Does it sound bad because of those reflections? No, I don't think so. Uh, could it sound better? Maybe. I'm thinking I'm going to try putting a curtain over this door just to tamp down those reflections a little bit. I will say, however, the benefits of having a glass door that lets you see outside of your booth and let in sunlight, can you imagine? My quality, my um, mental health has markedly improved just by virtue of not feeling trapped in a box, staring at a computer screen and talking to myself for hours and hours a day. It's amazing how good it feels to see the sun. Um, in addition to that, the amount of working space I have, because one thing I was considering was the Studio Bricks 1 versus the 1 Plus, the difference between those simply being an extra foot of working space in the long dimension. Uh, there's plenty to work with in the Studio Bricks 1, in my opinion. Granted, I am used to a very tight space. Um, there's still lots of room for me to work with here. I would say the Studio Bricks 1 Plus might be beneficial if you would like a bigger chair or if you're a really active person. Uh, in the booth. But for me, this is a good way to go, particularly when I needed to go as budget as possible with this investment. The Studio Bricks VO Edition, let's talk a little bit about that. So that comes with this table, the added base trap, a yellow tech mounting system, as well as a mounted uh, monitor bracket that you can drill into the walls of your booth. The way that that monitor bracket works, you just pop a couple of uh, these guys off sitting behind me. You just pull them off, drill into the wall, and you're good to go. Uh, it's really easy to set up, and it worked pretty well. The yellow tech mounting system is really, really nice. The arm, it is super flexible. You can position this thing anywhere you want. It comes with a Mogami uh, XLR cable threaded through it. I will say the Mogami cable seems, in terms of length, intended for you to have your 
audio interface and maybe even computer in the booth with you. For myself, for both uh, radio frequency interference and just heat output from both of those items, the interface and computer, I've routed everything out to my desk behind my booth. Um, and if that's something you'd be interested in doing, you'll need to uh, get some extra cable length to work in there. Uh, but other than that, the mounting system is fantastic. The arm, it comes with a monitor mount, which I was curious about. You can mount your computer to the arm that swings off of the mounting system, which is really nice. You can position, tilt it however you want. And, uh, the copy stand, I didn't really find much use for. I found that even at its lowest, it is at just sort of an awkward height for me for whatever that's worth, but I think if you're someone who does a lot of live sessions where you're not having to do the engineering yourself, uh, then it might be a great option for you to just have less stuff in the booth with you. But for me, I have to be working on my DAW and everything all at once, uh, so it just wasn't a practical solution for me. The table is at a bit of an awkward height for me. If I'm being honest, I am again in my old booth. I had a little bit more real estate to work with and my table was height adjustable so I could tweak it exactly to where I wanted it. So for myself, I'm planning on getting just a keyboard drawer to pop in here and give myself a little bit of more real estate to work with as well as uh, lower the keyboard just a smidge for myself. And that's that. So all in all, the big question, was it worth it? Yeah. Yeah, it was worth it. Uh, it was a big investment. I was nervous about it because my other booth sounded so good. But in terms of the quality of life improvement, the peace of mind of having solid sound isolation, knowing that I'm not going to be interrupted in my recordings, for gosh sake, I can run a super duper sensitive microphone like this one with music blasting right outside the door and I'm still going to get relatively usable audio. I mean, that's hard to beat. Uh, and beyond that, I live in Brooklyn and my wife and I might move apartments at some point. And I wasn't interested in rebuilding my booth every time we move, if we move apartments, if we decide to leave New York, whatever the question may be. So for all those reasons, this was the right purchase for me and my business. And there you go. If you have any questions about this booth, about anything else of voiceover, drop me a line down below and I'll get back to you ASAP. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, check out my website and schedule a session with me. Uh, I can tune your booth. I can help you with some uh, technical stuff if you're having difficulty with that. If you want to run by some acting notes with somebody who supposedly knows what they're doing a little bit, uh, I'm here for you because that was one of the big things for me and why I'm making this channel. Having somebody to talk to about this stuff is really helpful. Uh, so with all that said, I hope this was helpful for you. And until the next one, be well. Toodles.